In today's video tutorial, we'll be checking out WooCommerce Warehouse Management System Flutter Mobile Application Backend Configuration Settings. Hi, and welcome back to this new video tutorial of WooCommerce. In today's video tutorial, we'll be checking out WooCommerce Warehouse Management System Flutter Mobile Application Backend Configuration Settings. So what we'll be doing in this particular demonstration today is that we'll be checking the backend configuration of the same, wherein we'll be seeing how the admin of the WooCommerce in the first place would be able to create the managers, will be able to manage the warehouses there using the mobile application itself and then we'll be seeing how the admin would be able to create the uh, what we say as the warehouses in the first place apart from that we'll be seeing how we'll be able to print the barcodes for the totes or the baskets there how we can manage the orders and how we can basically assign the orders that we have received to the different warehouse managers and how we can select the warehouses for the same as well and the rest of the configuration settings as well. But before I proceed further with this particular video tutorial today, please do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to receive the latest updates from our end. And if you find this particular video helpful, then do kindly give it a thumbs up. So initially what I'll be doing is I'll be taking you to the admin backend panel of the WooCommerce there and they will be seeing how we'll be able to create the managers warehouses, how we can check the tote basket, uh, what we say as the uh, barcodes there and how we can check the orders and the rest of the configuration settings where in we'll be seeing how we can uh, do a mass upload of the products into the warehouses as well using a comma submitted value file there. So for the same, let's hop onto the backend panel of the WooCommerce first and then we'll check the rest of the workflow thereafter. So right now you can see on your screens that uh, I am on the backend panel of the WooCommerce uh, backend panel basically. So what I'll be doing initially is I'll be logging into the admin backend panel by entering the username, password and tapping on the login button thereafter. So let's get ahead and let's log into the admin backend panel first. So let's tap here on the login. After we have tapped on the login button on the left hand side panel here you can see that we have one option with the name warehouse management. Now under the warehouse management, you can see that we have different options uh, to add and manage the managers, warehouses. We have the option to view the tote and baskets. We have, to, or we have the option to view the orders and the configuration settings as well. So first of all, let me take you to the configuration settings and then we'll go through the rest of the options there that are available there in the backend panel there. So if I tap here on the configuration option, then uh, here you can see that we have two tabs. One is the general and one is the advanced tab. Using the advanced tab, you will be able to assign products into the warehouse from a CSV file. And this tool allows you to import or merge product data to your store from a CSV file. So what you need to do is you can download a sample CSV file uh, by tapping on this particular link that you can see here. And that particular file would look something like this with the SKU, the slug, the stock and the location for the row, column and the rank numbers. And after that, what you need to do is you need to upload this particular file through using this choose file option here. Then, uh, then you have to, uh, then uh, you have to tap on the continue button. You will be taken to the uh, column mapping where you have to map the columns with the CSV file names there. And thereafter, you will have to tap on the continue button to import the products. And then lastly, it would be done and the products would be assigned to the respective warehouse there as per the requirement there itself. Now, for example, if I tap here on the choose file option and I go to downloads here and uh, let me check this file name that we have. It's the sample warehouse product CSV. Uh, let me close it out. Sample warehouse product. I'll select that out. I'll tap here on the continue button. Uh, now here you can see that we have to map the CSV fields to the products there and you have to select the fields from your CSV file to map against the product fields. Uh, otherwise you can also uh, ignore them during the import there. So here you can see that with the SKU we have to map the uh, uh, SKU with the slug with slug, the stock with stock, the location with location and then you have to tap here on the run the importer button. And this would uh, basically import, you can see the import has completed and three products were skipped. Uh, and here you can see that uh, we have currently checked the warehouse slug. It does not match with any of the warehouses available. So right now what I have done is that basically 
uh, the uh, warehouse slug that I had used is uh, not available in the admin back end panel that's why these products were not uh, what we say as imported there so what you need to do is in that particular file in the CSV file you have to put the uh, put the respective slug of the warehouse there in the slug column there and accordingly the products then would be imported into those warehouses as per the requirement itself so this was the advanced tab now coming to the general tab here if i come down to the general tab okay i'll have to log in once again so let me log in to the section once again so here you have to give the username and the password basically and the fcm notification api key needs to be entered and then you need to tap here on the save changes button now coming down to the all managers section now under the all managers what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to create and manage the warehouse managers and uh, when you are creating a warehouse management uh, the particular username and the password is sent onto the email address of the warehouse manager and uh, using those credentials he'll be able to log into the mobile application uh, for managing the orders within the warehouses there itself as per the requirement on their android or on their ios devices using the flutter mobile application itself for the wms for the uh, woocommerce uh, platform based web source there now uh, under the all managers what i'll do is here you can see a complete list of managers and uh, what i'll do is to add a new manager i'll just tap here on the add new at the top uh, this would bring up this particular section so i'll give the username for example let me set the username as smith uh, would be the username uh, smith would be the first name last name as doe uh, the password is auto generated here uh, then i'll enter the smith at the rate of webcool.com as the email address of the uh, what we say as the warehouse manager and I'll enter the uh, telephone number for the same. Uh, if you want, you can also enter the date of birth for the same. Uh, you can select the uh, gender. The street address can be selected, as you can see, right? And let me set it as California. And I'll set this status as enabled. And I'll tap here on the save button thereafter. Now, after entering these details, the manager would be saved and we'll be able to see the particular manager being listed. So you can see that the profile has been created successfully. Now, if I go to the all managers, here we'll be able to find Smith. For example, if I enter Smith and I search for Smith, uh, the Smith uh, would be uh, basically available here for viewing purposes there. So if I go to the last there, so here you can see that we have Smith, Smith at the rate of webcool.com. Here's the telephone number, members since today's date, and status is enabled there. So that was how we can uh, basically create the managers uh, for all the warehouse managers from the admin backend panel under the warehouse management configuration settings there. Now let's see how we'll be able to add a particular warehouse itself. Now to add a warehouse, you have to go to all warehouses, and this would list the complete list of warehouses that you have created along with the warehouse name, warehouse manager, creation date, the status and the actions column to manage the warehouses. Now kindly note that you will be able to assign multiple warehouse managers to a particular warehouse there as per the requirement itself. Now how to add a warehouse? Do you have to tap here on the add new button at the very top? So I'll tap here on the add new button and this would bring up this particular section. Here we have to enter the details of the warehouse so for now what i'll do is i'll set it as for example uh test 22 uh warehouse under the warehouse manager we can choose smith for example uh, i can enter smith smith doe is there john john doe is there so i've added two managers we can add as many as managers i want to add to this particular warehouse there I'll choose the country, state, city, postal code, address. Uh, then we'll set the load threshold here for the products. Uh, we'll set the status as enabled. Then we'll be setting up the product configuration for the rows, columns, and the racks there. So uh, within the warehouse itself. So what I'll do is I'll be able to set here the number of rows, columns, uh, shelves, racks, and the tote and baskets that need to be created for the particular warehouse there. So for this particular demonstration, let's set it to two, two, two. Uh, two rows, two columns, two shelves, two racks and uh, let's set the tote or the baskets as two there and let's tap here on the save warehouse button. 
So you can see that the test 22 warehouse has been created and the warehouse managers are John Webcool.com and Smith there, the creation date enable. Now after the warehouse has been created, what we need to do is we need to tap here on the manage option. And from here, we'll get the uh, details of the warehouse itself. Now in the configuration, we were seeing that we had to use the slug of the warehouse. Now that slug can be uh, fetched from this particular section, that's slug. So this is the slug for the warehouse there. This is to be entered within the CSV file while we are importing or uh, importing the products within the warehouse there using a comma separated value file in bulk. Now you can also edit the details of the warehouse by tapping here on the edit option that you can see. Uh, and here we have the details of the warehouse. Now let's go to the products and let's see how we can assign the products to the warehouse there. And uh, here what I'll do is I'll be assigning one product so I'll go to the unassigned section and uh, from the unassigned section we'll be able to see the complete list of products that are there that have not yet been assigned to this particular warehouse so for example let me choose Tesla uh, here uh, as the product and from the bulk actions I will choose assign product and I'll tap here on the apply button now if I go to the assign of a link here you can see that Tesla has been assigned to this particular uh, warehouse and from here we can assign the stock uh, to this uh, particular product for the warehouse so I'll tell it as 23 and I'll tap on the side and you can see that the product stock has been updated successfully so the warehouse has been created the product has been assigned successfully now the product needs to be set up on the row column or the rack as per the requirement there so for that what we need to do is we need to go to the architecture section but before that I wa also want to tell you you can generate the barcodes uh, for the product as well by tapping here on the barcode you can see that the barcode has been uh, generated here for the product if you want to uh, print out the barcode then you need to enter the quantity of the barcodes that you want to generate and then tap on the print option and uh, that would basically uh, do the rest of the things and you'll be able to basically print the barcode there for the product there as per the requirement now let me close it out and so the product has been assigned now let's go down to the architecture section and here you can see that here we have two rows two columns and two shells there column one column two row one row two right and shell a shell b shell a shell b now I want to assign the, a particular this particular product to a row one column one shell one so I'll tap on row one column one shell one and here you can see that uh, we have the rack 0 and rack 1 so I'll choose Tesla the quantity would be popped up I can assign it this quantity to this particular rack as well as I can set it to the rack 2 as well so we can set uh, for example 10 quantity here and 10 quantity or 13 quantity here and we can allocate it to the particular racks there or if I want I can go with only one and I can set for example 23 and I can tap here on the allocate you can see that the product allocated to the location I'll tap ok and I'll tap submit and the product would be allocated to the particular section there so let me do uh, show it once again to you uh, Tesla ok and uh, let, let's cancel this out basically so basically that's how we can assign the uh, what we say the product to the particular row column and the shell within the warehouse there and now uh, this was this particular section here uh, if I want to go with the row and column and shell B for example I can go I can select the product and uh, I can assign the products as well now let's do one thing let's assign one more product to this particular one uh, let's go with the quantity 29 here for example uh, we have updated the stock there. I'll come down back to the architecture. I'll go with the row one column one. I'll choose the Tesla product. I can tap here on the allocate. Allocated. I'll tap submit. You can see now the particular thing has been assigned to this row one column one chef B. So this was about how we can basically uh, create the warehouse in the first place and how we can basically assign the products to the warehouses, assign the quantity uh, for the product to the warehouse there and how we can assign uh, the particular product to the uh, architecture of the warehouse there as for the requirement itself. Now here you can see that we have the empty is green, semi-occupied is yellow and the fully occupied is kind of a pinkish color there and accordingly you will see that here. Now coming down to the tote and basket there, so if I come to the tote and basket here you will see the complete totes uh, 
uh, with their barcodes and you can filter the same using the uh, what we say as uh, the filter here so if I go with the test 22 warehouse I can filter out we had set it as two totes so only two totes with the barcodes are there if you want to generate the barcodes or print the barcodes you can tap here on the uh, print option and the particular thing would be printed out as you can see here on your screens or uh, the print has been there now coming down to the orders uh, here we'll see the complete list of orders that have been assigned to the different warehouses now let me show you the particular uh, workflow at the customers and how the customer would be able to initially place the order so what i'll do is i'll go to the all warehouses i'll go to the particular test warehouse and i'll go to the product so let me see we have tesla 01 as the product name so i'll just search uh, the same and i'll just go out here and i'll just enter tesla 101 i'll search for the product i'll add it to the cart there and after adding it to the cart uh, let's with the cart and uh, here we'll be proceeding to the checkout and uh, i've not logged in so i'll just be entering my details here as you've seen and i'll choose my payment method and i'll place the order after placing the order we'll be able to see the particular order id here as a customer so this is the workflow wherein uh, the customer is placing the order and then how the admin would be able to assign the particular warehouse to a particular order there so the order number is 3452 as you can see now let's come down back to this particular section and let's go to the woocommerce and orders and here we have the order number 3452 by jack daniel we'll open it out and here i uh, will scroll down to the particular section that shows this uh, details here wherein we can select the warehouse and the particular manager with the same so here we'll see the particular product is available in different warehouses along with the test 22 warehouse that we had created so i'll select the warehouse there and then i'll select the manager so here you can see that we had assigned john doe and smith to this uh, test 22 warehouse so i can choose john doe and then i'll go up and i'll tap here on the update button and the particular uh, order would be assigned to the respective warehouse there so you can see the, the, that the order has been updated now if i scroll down you can see test 22 and john doe is the manager of the warehouse now if i come down to the warehouse management section and i go to the orders the particular order would now be visible here and here we can see the process uh, or the status of the order as well whether it's in the on hold processing or packed or uh, shipped uh, status there depending upon the status that has been updated by the warehouse manager for the respective order there itself so yes that was much about the woocommerce warehouse management system flutter mobile application backend configuration and i hope that this particular video helped you out in understanding the workflow of the same if you still have any questions query sessions or requirements regarding the same then you can anytime get back to us at support at the rate of webcool.com or you can raise a ticket at webcool.uvdesk.com as well and if you find this particular video helpful then do kindly give it a thumbs up and lastly thanks for watching this particular video and have a great day ahead <music>